Okay, next, Mike, if you could add a player and or a position to the recruiting class that Notre Dame realistically has a shot at, who would it be? And, of course, if there's multiple, don't stop. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really just who they have still on the board um, in terms of, look, they, they hit their mark. Uh, they've, they've hit every position, like, uh, they wanted three receivers, got it. They 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 wanted three offensive linemen, got that. They wanted what is it, four defensive linemen, got that. Three linebackers, got that. So I mean, they hit their marks, and now it's just as I said so many times, it's about filling the class with just players who are too good not to take. So Scott would definitely be that. The guy we just talked about uh, from Chicago, St. Ignatius, a five star interior defensive lineman. Notre Dame will do whatever really they can do to to get Scott the flip. Um, and, and make that happen. Obviously, Gerby Lambert is another one for Notre Dame. They would absolutely love to land him. I'm really liking where the Irish are at with this, you know, borderline five-star player um, from Catholic Memorial in Massachusetts. Notre Dame, Boston College, Harvard, Ohio State, looking like the the, the top four. That's the four programs we officially visited in June. Um, so Notre Dame looking good there. Again, three offensive line commits. You take, you know, Gerby Lambert would be much more than the icing on the cake. That ends up being, you know, one of your, I, I think, I think second or third highest ranked player uh, of the class per the industry ranking and um, a monstrous number one target, uh, you know, on the offensive line board for quite some time. And then Caleb Beasley, definitely. Uh, again, Notre Dame's got what it's won on the defensive backboard in terms of like, hey, this, we, we got the amount of corners we wanted, all that, but Beasley. You know, talking to Notre Dame sources since they've been recruiting him for, I think, two years now, they think Beasley's a five-star type talent, and, and I absolutely agree with it as well. And, and multiple viewings that I've seen of Beasley live, uh, just an absolute freak talent, super special corner. So Beasley, a Tennessee commit, did visit Notre Dame April 1st. Over the summer, after he took his official to Tennessee, he did say, no, nah, I'm locked in. But it's kind of interesting, Darren. Notre Dame's usually the school that has to commit and you hear those types of things like, Oh yeah, I'm committed to Notre Dame. Still might take a visit. Oh, maybe. And now Notre Dame's on the other side of it. Maybe can they go into Nashville and flip Taylor, Caleb Beasley from the Vols? We'll, we'll have to see, but you know, there's been chatter about him taking official for the Ohio state game. Now there might not, we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, that I would still say it's somewhat realistic that Notre Dame can flip Caleb Beasley and uh, again, Darren, that would be absolutely huge. He's a special player. Okay, finally, Dan asks, which commitment are you most looking forward to seeing in person this fall? I wish he would have had a sense of humor and asked, hey, you going back to see CJ Carr? Is he going to let you come back this year? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that. I mean, Kyle Kelly uh, covers recruiting for us at Blue and Golds, and he's, he's based um, in the Midwest, so – we kind of handle our travel a little bit regionally now. So um, I, I think he lives 45 minutes from car. So he's going to, I don't think I'll be going to see CJ car this fall. Um, so Kyle will, will at least once, probably twice. Um, so what, whereas Notre Dame's doing a lot of recruiting in the South. I mean, they got two commitments from the state of Georgia, three in North Carolina. I'll be going to Chattanooga to see Beasley and, is on the same high school team as Deuce Knight now, Notre Dame's top 2025 quarterback target. Wow. Um, you know, where I've lived a lot of my life down in the Clearwater Tampa area, Notre Dame's got a couple of commitments. So just a lot of guys here. And then I'll be taking some out of state or excuse me, um, some flight trips as well this fall. But the, there's two that I'm really looking forward to seeing. One was Bryce Young um, from Charlotte Christian and his teammate, Micah Gilbert. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing these guys. Um, I saw Gilbert at camp at Notre Dame, but just in, in the game environment, how good Micah Gilbert is. He's kind of like everyone talks about, you know, Cam Williams, you know, and, and looking at the 24 receiver class for Notre Dame and then Logan Saldate, the recent commit. I feel like Gilbert just doesn't get talked about enough. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him six. He's listed at six two 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 oh five. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like two ten two fifteen. Like he's a big dude. I would I would expect him to play closer to 215, 220 in Notre Dame. Like he's just that kind of physical big receiver. But I think the number one guy is Cole Mullins. I mean, Notre Dame sources and talking to them, they think Cole Mullins is just an absolute freak show and thinks that a three-star ranking is ridiculous. Like people want to get all up in arms about on threes ranking a CJ car. And and folks in Notre Dame are. 
but they'll talk about Cole Mullins and, and him being a three-star just as much. Like they think that they've got an absolute steal here in like, how has Clemson and Georgia not offered this kid? I think part of it might be he was playing linebacker and he's definitely a defensive end. Maybe even he plays strong side. Who Who's saying that he couldn't bulk up and be a three tech like this guy? The sky's the limit for him. Great size. Um, got a fantastic motor. Great athletic background, too. Um, I think that Notre Dame has, has got a really good player in Cole Mullins. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing him this fall. And for people that don't know, you went to see Carr last year and he had a really, really rough game. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's important context. It was like six for twenty-five. Uh, this team lost seven to zero. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't a great game. Um, but yeah, that 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 one's in the past, and uh, I'm expecting a huge year from CJ Carr. <laughs>